everyday um, material and displacement. I think the first one is the word hectic. Uh, meaning that I seem to spend a lot of my time running around very, very quickly trying to do lots and lots of different things. So I picked three words um, which are writing, roller coaster, and home. So dynamic and organised and persistent. Stimulating, challenging, and enriching. The second word I would use is challenging. And the reason I use that word is that essentially I come from that other world called science. So most of my colleagues here essentially did their first degrees and their PhDs in arts and humanities. And when I arrived in museum studies, I discovered that they were using lots of terms and, and ideas and what have you that were completely alien to me and I had no idea what they were talking about. But at the same time, it's been incredibly rewarding because it's provided me with a completely different insight and viewpoint onto museums and the museum world and one which I, I really didn't have before. So um, the first word writing, it's really straightforward. I think it's what PhD is mainly about. What does it feel like to um, experience everyday life, ordinary life, when you're a member of a particular group? That might be um, a particular group of museum visitors, it might be um, a particular, as I say, a particular cultural group um, or whatever, but how, how does it feel on a quotidian basis to be a member of that group, not just in terms of extraordinary events within that group? Um, I think the first one is probably exciting. Um, I was medievalist before I became a, a museum studies person. And I'm really glad I moved into museum studies because it's given me so much excitement intellectually. So the reason I chose those is, uh, as soon as I arrived, I realised this was a very dynamic department and everybody worked very hard. So I thought, OK, I will as well. And over the years, I've seen students come and they're usually quite quiet and shy when they first come. And by the time they leave, four years later, they're also dynamic and organised and persistent in, you know, completing their PhD. But the staff were all persistent in solving problems or whatever needs to be sorted out as we go along. It's innovative. Um, starting in School of Museum Studies have, has provided a whole new process of learning to me. Um, compared to my previous education experience, I learned how to think critically, how to read critically, and also I gained a lot of experience to explore various cultural contexts. The first is life changing. I feel that um, you know, being in the field of museum studies um, and actually looking at the subject from an interdisciplinary point of view has certainly opened up uh, my horizons. It is going to be privileged. And by privileged, I mean that I'm incredibly lucky to actually work alongside some of the most important people in the world who do research in museum studies. It's rewarding, just because it doesn't feel like a long journey that only leads to your PhD. There's so many stepping stones before the final um, PhD. And the last word, his home, is um, about the environment itself. Um, so here we have really um, friendly, supportive um, community. Friendship, I think. I've made a lot of amazing connections and relationships with people during my time in museum studies. My experience is inspiring. I think every single day uh, in my interactions with um, students, I think I, you know, I learn something different from every one of them, be it um, a student from, you know, Turkey, a student from China, a student from, uh, you know, South Korea, a student from uh, Latin America and Argentina and Brazil, uh, even in America and um, Italy, you know, I think um, everybody brings with them a very rich um, professional experience working in the museum and a kind of academic perspective about museum studies that I'm also, you know, um, you know learning along with them every day. So learning. Uh, museum studies has taught me that it's impossible really to ever stop learning and I understand 
so much more than I ever did um, before how little we always know. I would say open because I think when I first started my PhD I didn't realise the opportunities that we have uh, by doing the PhD here, so like being able to teach or being able to be open to these different discussions, I would say like open in general, uh, either to opportunities, discussions, meeting new people, uh, doing new things. It's like where I belong. Um, some examples are like what exactly are you doing in your PhD, what is museum studies about? One of the most kind of interesting but also sometimes most challenging things to try and explain to people is what you're actually doing in your research time and also trying to explain that that is a core part of your job and a core responsibility of your job. It's not something that you feel like doing when you want to that's a kind of bit of a treat or a luxury that you get to do in spare time um, but that actually it's you know it's it's a third of your job and um, it's a very important um, thing to which you are accountable or for which you're accountable to the university um, and that the university expects you to do. The most common question that I encountered are so why, what, what is museum studies? Why do you like museum? I only have one sentence, I think, for them. Like, why don't you just go to a museum by yourself? And then you will know what museum looks like and how, what you can learn from museum. And you can experience a lot. And why don't you just enjoy your, enjoy your visit to any museum? then you will not answer. And what is museum studies about? Um, yeah, again, they will show, you know, their, their own understanding, something like that. They, they might ask a further question like, um, so do you study museum studies in order to work in museum? I would say, well, yeah, some people do work in a museum, but some people also want to be an academic, but you don't need to be studying museum studies to work in the museum. Some people did archaeology, art history, and then they work in the museum. Quite often, um, people will say to me, what do you do in the sense of, you know, what kind of job do you have? And I will say to them, well, actually, I teach and research in the School of Museum Studies at Leicester. And their next question is, School of Museum Studies? Well, what do you do in that exactly? And I say to them, basically, what we do is train the next generation of people who will lead museums and related institutions into the future. People do ask me what people who work in museums do all day. Now I also wonder this, I'm not sure, but what I hope they do is preserve the objects that reflect the national heritage of whichever country it is but also inspire people with stories. Um, so ideas come from the stories that are shown in exhibitions so that people can um, imagine um, all about different um, countries or stories or objects or whatever's in the exhibition. Of course, what I also say to them is something along the lines of, do you know how many people walk down Exhibition Road in London in a year 40 million tourists walk down Exhibition Road. Why do they walk down that road? Because they're going to the museum. It might be the V&A, it might be the Naturist Museum, they might be en route to one of the other big museums in London. But museums are primarily what attract those 40 million people. This has a huge impact on us as a country, not just economically, but also culturally. Uh, and, and in many other ways. So I think in that regard, museums, museology are not sort of peripheral, marginal kind of subjects, which is often the kind of reaction you get from people when they ask you what you do. These are actually really fundamental components of the society and the culture which we live in. The tough bit is actually communicating that to people, but those kinds of numbers of tourists is one way of doing it. I think the most common question that I've had while I've been in museum studies, it's going to sound very silly, but it's, 
are you Indiana Jones then? Um, and the answer is no. <laughs> no. Um, Indiana Jones is an archaeologist. We're museum studies, that's very different. Um, but often people are really interested in museum studies and they have in many ways a really romantic idea of what that might be. And I think it's to do with the excitement of working with material things. You know, we've got this image of a person who spends all day in a cupboard uncovering exciting pieces of material and that's a fantastic thing for people to think. Um, you get these wonderful uh, expressions of delight when you tell people that you study museums and what they do. And I think that's a really exciting thing. You know, what inspire you to do Asian museology? You know, what's so special about Asian museology? I guess that has to, you know, come. Um, you know, I have to turn the clock back to um, a time when I was doing uh, my program of, uh, of masters in museum studies here in the UK. Coming to the UK and learning about museum studies here. Uh, makes me wonder about how applicable um, some of the, the theories that we read in, in, in the, uh, our books are. Um, and I, for me, I always felt that coming from Southeast Asia and, you know, um, from Singapore and actually travel, um, somebody who have traveled around um, Southeast Asia and the big part of, um, you know, East Asia, I often feel that, you know, the kind of theories that has been proposed, um, you know, in, in the mainstream academia does not quite reflect the phenomena of museum studies that we we, um, you know, we experience or we encounter in the Asian context. And I think with that has been a, a main driving force for me to, um, you know, to do research in the field of museum studies, to add to a voice to say that, you know, there is um, actually different other perspectives about um, looking at museology. There are perspectives from Asia that um, I think sometimes align with, but at other times also contest the kind of um, prevailing theories that we sure. see. And opposite classic comments that I get every time I say that I'm still um, studying PhD in museum studies is that, oh my god, museums are amazing. <laughs> or, uh, oh my god, museums are so boring, which is... <laughs> but I think it's part of the ideas and I'm very glad actually when I meet people who say the museums are boring because I can, I can actually say that they are not and there is a lot of discussion going on and especially at Leicester you are thought to challenge these ideas of traditional museums, you know, temple of culture and knowledge and that they are eternal and they never change and, and they do change and hopefully like they will always change. What is it about museums? So I, I would say like, um, okay, we all are, um, we're all interested in the museum, but we study, you know, different aspects, some people are interested in collections, some people look at visitors, some people look at museum uh, technique, multimedia, and on and on. And yeah, my research is mainly about collections. Um, so. Some people ask me, what does a PhD student do on a regular basis? And it's very hard to answer that question, just because um, in general, PhD students don't just stay in the library and read books, although that's part of what we do. <laughs> um, but especially museum studies, it's not just about the literature. You do a lot of work in museums, maybe. Uh, part of your research might be based in museums, it might be very practical. You might get involved in other museum projects. So it's really hard to, to say what you're going to do on a specific day. Ask a further question that's based on their own understanding. Like, um, do you have class? So I would answer, well, not really. So the timetable is flexible. It depends on how you agree with you, your supervisor and how you plan to do it. How do I know if a PhD is right for me? And that's a very personal question. And it's uh, a little difficult to, to answer it, but I would say, that you need to be passionate about your subject. It's something that you're, you're going to think about and study and research for a very long time. You know, minimum three years full time. So being passionate and being really interested in what you're doing is key. Uh, the best thing that's happened to me is that two years ago the students <laughs> recommended me for the Superstar Award which is a very coveted thing amongst staff and I was so pleased 
because nobody has ever told me that I work really hard and that, uh, in fact, I will just tell you one of the two of the things that the students say. This has inspired me to carry on working hard, so it's very important. Christine is one of the most delightful people on earth. <laughs> that's, that's really amazing. But um, so that I remind people to do everything, that I'm a prompter to remember to do things. And, and um, people said that Christine, you can be sure she will get the job done and she will do it well too. So this is a very, you know, wonderful thing to have. So. That's made me think I'm doing things on the right track and I will carry on doing things for the students and the other areas of work that I have to do. Opportunities that I was given was to participate in the organisation of a conference, so the seven uh, PhD-led conference that was um, took place last year, well, uh, in September, and that was completely organized and carried out by PhD students, so that was, you know, uh, tiring but satisfying at the same time because it, it ended up being, you know, very, very good, so that was a memorable experience for sure. But the experience that springs most clearly to mind, it comes from the time I was a PhD student here, I was a second year PhD student at the time, and my cohort decided that we wanted to put on a conference. Um, and this conference was not the first event that Museum Studies PhD students had run, but it was the first multi-day, internationally focused conference that, that PhD students at the school had run. Um, it was called Curiouser and Curiouser, um, and it was themed around ideas of the curious, the strange, the weird in museum spaces. Planning that conference, chairing, co-chairing really, the, the committee for that conference, organising international speakers and delegates, organising even you know, really mundane things like catering, deciding on the programme and how it was going to be put together. That was a really memorable experience for me. We put together an exhibition as well. There's probably bits of it still hanging around the department. Um, and it was just a phenomenal experience to have all these people in one room talking about something that was professional, yes, but was also remarkably playful and exciting. And because we were PhD students, we had the capacity to think about museum studies in a way which was serious but also irreverent and, and I really value that. Um, for me it wasn't really a moment, it was more of a period, uh, probably the period of doing research in, um, in a museum. So my case study, my main case study for my PhD is Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery and um, my uh, research there was also funded by M through M4C. Um, so I just think it's such a privileged position we're in uh, to be able to just do research completely, um, you know, immersed in the museum environment for three years. Um, we are able to focus on that completely um, and doing Vista research is probably one of the most fun things I've done um, after, you know, spending a year of researching exactly what I'd like to focus on in my PhD. It was fun to then go into a, an actual museum and ask uh, visitors what they thought about what I was researching and being, um, yeah, and their answers are always so interesting and so out there. Um, and they might not necessarily know exactly what I'm doing, but it's nice to engage with people and see what they think about certain museums or certain artifacts and actually see what's going on in the museum space instead of just reading about it. Maybe organizing the PhD conference. Um, that's because that's one of the reasons why I applied to Leicester in particular. Um, before I applied, I looked on the website and then it showed that, you know, uh, PhD students from the previous years, they organized a PhD conference and 
I think, oh, I really wanted to do that. And then, yeah, in my second year, I um, yeah, asked friends if they wanted to do that. And I consulted, consulted my supervisor. And yeah, I did learn a lot um, by, you know, organizing it. I think for me it was actually uh, last year research week uh, because for me it was really nice to see so many people from the school together for like a whole week. Uh, I don't know, it was for me it was really nice and a really great experience to meet and have lunch and dinner and stay like one week with so many people doing research and I don't know, like the whole atmosphere uh, was great. I think the whole four years that I spent, I've spent here at the school, it's all, there's so many moments that are worth it to remember and they're all deeply in my mind now. So I'm now involved in teaching a thing called the Green Museum, where we look at the role of museums in terms of uh, advocating for and promoting sustainability against this backdrop of massive changes in the natural environment. And it was while I was researching this in order to be able to teach it that I sort of came to the realisation that actually the problems that we face are much, much more immediate than I think I or many other people realised. So my feeling previously about this whole subject area was that well, climate change, yes, it's happening, but it's not that quick. Yes, you know, biodiversity, the number of species is declining, but, you know, really these are all problems that my children or my children's children can actually sort out. And there was a moment about three years ago when I was doing my research where I sort of suddenly realised, actually, no, this is not the kind of problem that's going to be faced by people in the future. It'll be a much bigger problem for them. It's something we need to do something about now. And that, for me, was a really kind of big moment of sort of, oh my goodness, no, I really need to start doing something about this. So my tiny, tiny contribution has been to start teaching the Green Museum and sustainability in museums and hopefully be able to develop that into a much bigger subject area in the future. And being um, somebody who, who has just arrived uh, last year in May, I was very touched, um, I think, by the support that I have from lots of students and also from the PhD community and from the staff. I think um, being um, somebody of an Asian origin, um, you know, uh, dealing with, you know, a subject that is very much predominantly, um, you know, driven by a kind of, um, you know, that, that kind of um, Western perspective. I feel very encouraged, um, you know, when people came up to me and tell me, you know, I'm, I'm glad, you know, to have you here because you understood our, our perspectives and you were you are able to actually um, address kind of um, the, the, the local context that we face when we talk about museums in in the non-Western context. So I, I feel that, you know, for me, I see my role as also, um, I think, giving voice to, um, you know, the community, our PhD communities, our student communities, and um, actually, uh, you know, broaden that kind of perspective of the school to say, to, to look at um, actually, um, you know, other phenomenon, um, like museum phenomenon from the non-Western context. I was working part-time um, as a curatorial assistant uh, originally and then a bit later as an assistant curator in the Pitt Rivers Museum in Oxford um, and I still feel that's kind of one of my favourite places in the world um, and I know it's it's not everybody's cup of tea but um, it the opportunity to work with those amazing collections um, was just fantastic and I think if there if I had to pinpoint one kind of moment in time that maybe was most influential was sort of going into the museum after half past four at night after it had closed to the public all the lights were off and standing in the middle of the court of the museum in the dark and just feeling just a, an immense sense of kind of sounds I'm going to sound a bit crazy now, but immense power and magic really from being in that space with all those objects from all those different times and cultures. And of course there's a whole raft of political and cultural sensitivities 
that go along with those objects being there, um, which which is incredibly complex and um, important. But there's also something um, incredibly beautiful and powerful about about those things and the opportunity to be able to experience them as well. And that and that privilege of being able to to be in that work in that place and work with those objects has been incredibly influential on me in my subsequent career as well.